Hello, I'm John Chu, and I'm the ambassador of school libraries for Scholastic Book Fairs. Your middle school is moving into the spring, and there's no better way to finish the year on a high note than with a Scholastic Book Fair. Scholastic has so many great books this year to keep kids engaged in reading. I sat down with some of my favorite storytellers and wanted to share our conversations with you, starting with Francisco Stork, the author of Illegal. Would you be up for telling everyone what Illegal is about? Illegal is the uh, is the sequel of the book that I wrote a couple of years ago called Disappeared. And, uh, and Disappeared uh, is the story of Sarah and Emiliano. They are, uh, Sarah lives in Juarez uh, and her brother Emiliano, and she is a reporter and she's investigating the disappearance of so many women that have disappeared in that city uh, over the years. And as she starts finding clues as to who's responsible for the disappearance, uh, her life becomes more and more in danger. And at the same time, there's the story of Emiliano who grows increasingly uh, more, uh, gets closer to, uh, to doing bad things with his life. So eventually they both have to uh, uh, leave Mexico and, and, and try to find safety in the United States. And that's where Disappeared ends and where Illegal begins. Illegal is the story of Sarah and Emiliano in the United States. Sarah seeks asylum and is quickly put in a detention center. And Emiliano goes off and tries to find his, uh, his father in Chicago, the father who left the family uh, many years before to start a new life. And what they discover in the United States is a danger that is even worse than the, what they encountered in Mexico. It's not the same kind of danger, uh, but it is, it, is, it, is just as, it is just as bad. So what I try to do in Illegal is really show the other side of the coin. Uh, all, the, all, all the bad things in Mexico somehow have a repercussion also in the United States. And there's a kind of like an echo that goes on between, uh, between the two books that I hopefully ends up in, uh, in showing kind of the reality of the, of, uh, of the of the relationship between the two countries and the immigration uh, policies in the United States. So Francisco, you have visited many schools and you have interacted with many students. And I'm curious to know, what is some writing advice that you find yourself giving to seventh and eighth graders when they ask you for writing advice? So the best advice that I can give them is the advice that I've been following myself, which is I started to keep a journal more or less when I was in the eighth grade. Uh, and this is kind of, I have, uh, lots of these journals and I basically write in it every day. The only rule that I have is that nobody will ever see what I write. My wife and my family know that they're, they're supposed to burn all the journals. But what, what writing every day in a journal does to you is that it gives you this kind of a instinct. You know, it's the, it's the equivalent of, of, of shooting three shots out in the playground day after day after day. After a while, if you do it repeatedly, it becomes a habit. And when you start writing your book, uh, it just becomes a lot easier because it, you, you've, you've acquired this, this facility for writing. That's good advice for me and for all of the teachers and librarians out there who are watching. So would you, Francisco, be up for finishing one of my sentences? Sure, sure. Let's <laughs> give it a shot. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. So here is the sentence starter. Scholastic book fairs, dot, dot, dot. Scholastic book fairs. It's a place where you can make the kind of discoveries that just might change your life. Now, if you have kids who are interested in fantasy, maybe something even a little haunted and spooky, tell them to check out Bendy, Dreams Come to Life. Here's author Adrian Kress to tell us all about so it. I'm gonna give you a scenario. So imagine that you're in a scholastic book fair and you are celebrating books with, let's say sixth graders, you're with sixth graders and they are super fans of Bendy. What would you tell them about this book I'm holding right here, Dreams Come to Life? The first thing I would say is, I love Ben D too, by the way, and I love the game as well. Um, and then the second thing I'd say about Dreams Come to Life is that it is a book um, as starring a brand new character, 17 year old Buddy, and his time as an apprentice writer at Joey Drew Studios. So while uh, Buddy is a new character, we get to see all the characters we know and love from the game. We see Joey Drew, Sammy is huge in the book. Oh gosh. Uh, 
oh my God, all the other characters um, are there as well. We meet Alison Pendle briefly, which is a very exciting moment, even for me writing it. Um, at the same time, we learn about Buddy and his time growing up. The book takes place in 1946, so just after World War II. He lives in the Lower East Side, which is kind of a um, he's poor, he's sort of living in the projects kind of area of New York City in the United States. And uh, he lives with his mother and his grandfather has mysteriously uh, shown up. He's been out of his life his entire life and is now suddenly staying with them. So there's a whole arc about that and where his grandfather has been during the war. I will give you a hint if any of you uh, uh, know, uh, Buddy is Jewish, so that might give you a hint a bit about where his grandfather has been. Um, and then Buddy, of course, is new to the studio and uh, he's getting to know people. He makes friends with uh, an apprentice writer at the studio. Uh, her name is Dot. And together they are trying to figure out a mystery happening at the studio. There are strange noises in the night. There are things that Joey is getting up to. They're not sure what's going on. And uh, Buddy at one point finds himself alone in the studio late at night and has a strange encounter with maybe a monster, maybe a demon made of ink. I don't know, you'll have to read it. So it all culminates in act three with Dot and Buddy and some other friends and uh, quite uh, an exciting uh, third act where a uh, lot of stuff and a lot of action takes place. I can feel, I can think there's light coming out of you. I can feel <laughs> how much fun you had working on this series. Yes. Time with these characters. I know everyone out there is going to have so much time, so much fun spending time with them on the page. So what was one of the best things about working on this series for you? I think the really cool thing is I had, I auditioned to write this book and you know sometimes I think when authors do that you know we're just going yeah this sounds cool let's do it but I became so passionate about the Bendy games and about the world and it's just so perfect for me because I'm also an actor I love film history I love old films I love old cartoons like everything about this game is so me. I'm so grateful that you get to tell these stories and that today you visited Meet the Books to talk about working on these books. Now, I love books, I love story, and of course, I love libraries. Mm -hmm. So would you be up for finishing one of my sentences today? Yeah, okay. All right, so, so here, <laughs> thank you for agreeing. So here is the sentence starter. School, libraries, dot, dot, dot. School, libraries are a sanctuary. Oh, they are, they are, they are. <laughs> they Thank you so yeah. much. And everyone look for Bendy at your Scholastic Book Fair. Adrian is wonderful. I cannot wait for you to introduce someone to the exciting world of Bendy. Oh, there are so many more books at the fair this year. Let me tell you about a few of my favorites. Starting with Wild River. When I read this heart racing adventure, it felt as though I was lost in the middle of the Montana wilderness with Daniel and his four companions. It felt as though someone had plopped me right into the middle of a raging river. I'd love to read a passage to you from chapter four. All I can hear is the roar coming down the ravine, closer and closer. Rushing water, yes, but other sounds. Snapping and breaking and pounding, loud enough to shake the ground and the cliff itself. Pick up a copy of Wild River. Dear Justice is the powerful sequel to Dear Martin. Incarcerated teen Quan's story is told through a series of flashbacks and letters to Justice, who is the main character in Dear Martin. Dear Justice takes a close look at the justice system, as well as the voices that are often silenced. In her author's note, Nick Stone writes this. May you take everything you gain from this book and put it toward improving this wild world we live in. There's a book for every reader to get lost in at this year's fair. I'm so happy I was able to share with you a few of the stories that Scholastic has to offer. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. And as always, happy, happy reading.